All right, today we're continuing our MW3 day one S&D strategy guide. This time we're moving over to Karachi Search and Destroy. And this time we're gonna be focusing on the offensive side and showing you guys an aggressive B push to try and get the bomb down quickly and win the round on that offensive side. BTF, I think that they think they got the bomb here. And you gotta love their attitude going into this match, staying confident. So right now they have a one to lead in Search and Destroy. It looks like it's grabbing and taking a very heavy B push. Counter-Strike style right now, pushing the whole team one way. It looks like it's wide open for them right now, but... Oh, J-Cap picked up a quick kill on Kaz, so... Looks like they're planning that bomb, Quiz. Yeah, Rambo's got it. He's high behind B, waiting to hear that the coast is clear. Looks like he's gonna jump down. I don't know if you saw, but I think I saw somebody up there on top, and he must have finally heard him as Fizzer did come in there and take out Rambo and Sid Rock. At the so once again, we're going deep into the old MLG 2010 Vaz MW2 gameplay, and we're looking at a winner's bracket finals of a PCL tournament, one of the more prominent tournaments back in the day, and this is Extravagant versus Influence. So we're gonna be looking at the Extravagant side on the offense, and uh, basically taking uh, what they wanna do with their tax and using it for our strategy, but we're gonna tweak a little bit of what they wanna do. So we're gonna see all four of the Extravagant guys go towards this B side you probably know the names you know J cap big timer Rambo these guys are gonna be throwing their tax over this building and actually trying to land it to actually stun anyone that might be going towards that B side on the defense and really screwing up their timing so they can get that aggressive pressure onto the map and onto that B side before the defense can really get there. So they come over to this grassy area, throw their tacks over the building and you see them throwing all of their tacks. Obviously back in the day uh, in MWT, you had double tacks uh, for free basically. So you could just throw your tacks and really abuse those. But again, for MW3, we're only gonna have that one stun, but you're still gonna be able to really abuse it with the timings uh, that you're gonna be able to get. Because if you can cut them off with that stun or at least get that info that they're there you're still going to get that pressure onto the site before them and and try and get that bomb down and eventually uh, work your way into a post plant setup so as you can see they're going to go through this jail building that's what they called it back in the day go onto this b side i think there should be two people going towards this site and the first person that doesn't have the bomb should be going towards this diner and really working that initial post plant setup and then the guy who has the bomb works the bomb and then the other two guys are going to be going towards uh, the broken you know stairs building and working that way so that they can test anyone on the defense trying to get a different angle, you know, on the balcony towards that site. So as you can see here, Jacob gets the first blood. Ray is trying to work this back diner side in case anyone was hiding back here. But the thing is, he has the bomb. So he probably wants someone without the bomb clearing that out first in case, you know, he does die. The bomb isn't trapped all the way in the back of the diner. Plus, you just get the timing so that you can actually start getting the bomb down quickly while your other guy is already pushing the diner for you. So you're just killing two birds with one stone. And then you have your two other guys working the stairs or broken building and really heavily focusing on that so that the enemy team has to, you know, really come out of their shell if they're playing towards that A side or if they've already been stunned towards this B side that they're actually, you know, nowhere near this site at all. So as you can see, Ray's trying to get back towards the bomb site to start planning it, but unfortunately the other team has some good tacks. They land a nade onto the bomb site, and as soon as he gets off, the guy is shooting him from this balcony area already. So really good tacks on the influence side, but again, with MW3, we're gonna have trophy systems, so you can do this with a trophy system if you have it during the that round and you won't be able to die from this type of position because you will have that trophy to protect you but another thing to note is on the defense you can actually see underneath this bus for anyone that might be crossing over to the bomb site so just be aware of anyone that could be seeing you uh, as you're trying to cross like ray did all right so it's not the best quality photo for the overhead for this one i couldn't really find any other better photo uh, because you know this was back in the day and you're just relying on anything that the game gave you so we're going to make work with what we got uh, so you have the offensive spawn over here the defensive spawn over here and what we're going to be doing is trying to contest towards this B side. This is where the bomb site is. This is where that diner area was that Ray was pushing around. And then you have, you know, your broken stair area building over here. This is what you're going to be wanting contesting as an offensive side. So you don't have anyone on the defense playing this balcony and shooting you off bomb while you're trying to get it planted. So I'll take you through the routes they were taking off spawn. Obviously on the offensive side, you go to the right here, go to this grassy area, start throwing your tacks within this area so that they can land over here. The big thing with your tax here is to maintain control over this cut right here because this is where the defense as they're spawning they're going to be trying to rush towards this b side if they're trying to contest it and they're going to be hit with the stuns as soon as they get over here so making sure that you at least get them stunned so that they have a delayed push towards the b side or at least get that info so you know that one or two are there so in case they you know start pushing underneath over here or start pushing towards the diner uh, you can account for them as you're starting to push onto the site but really important that you throw them over this building and land over here that's 
that's just going to make it so much easier for your team as they're trying to take control over this site. But once again, you can't just rely on that. You're going to have to take control of this building here specifically because this is going to be your cutoffs for anyone that might be rotating on the defensive side uh, towards this B side from A. So you're going to have a lot of cutoffs this way. Obviously, they can take a full flank and that's something you have to be aware of too, especially if you plan it for this side. But honestly, if you just wanted to insta rush it like you saw in the VOD and really take control of that quickly, just having that control over this building is really going to make your life so much easier. So you throw your tax over here, you're getting towards the bomb site. This is where you send two of your guys towards the B site. This is one guy that's going to be starting to plant and the other guy is going to wrap around deeper towards the diner side, try and play a little bit more post planting over here. And for the other two guys, they can be working through this building, you know, either going together up the stairs or even climbing the ladder. I believe it's over here, over here and climb up and contest that way. But really making sure that you clear this lower alley so they can't contest you as soon as you're coming out and that they're not on top of this balcony and can shoot you off bomb like I was talking about before. So if you cover this, you know, stairs broken building while you're getting the bomb down, as well as being able to actually wrap around here, if you can get like a quick pick on anyone that might've been, you know, playing super ratty, trying to look under the bus for this cross on anyone that might be going towards bomb. First off, you know, try and plan it more towards the outer side of the map, just so they can't see you, you know, while you're planning, you know, hopefully that's a thing in MW3. We'll see how the bomb placement it actually is, or whether you can even still see under the bus, because they have been changing a few different things uh, across the maps going into this MW3 season. And, uh, you know, just really making sure that you cover this lane with anyone that might be flanking around diner and covering underneath here and through this building. If you can maintain control of those as soon as you're instantly rushing towards this bomb site, get the bomb planted. It should be a really free offense for you and you can just play a really nice post plant from these positions. Now with post plant, if you have control over this building, once again, you can see bomb if you're in this lower hallway. You can see bomb if you're on top of this balcony. You can even see bomb if you know, you're know you outside here, you're watching the flank and you need to go and turn towards bomb in case other people on your team died. Even if you're playing towards this diner side, you can just play ratty in there. And if you think that they're on that bomb site, you can wrap around. They would still as a defense have to clear this entire diner side, especially if they're going to try and retake and defuse that bomb. So if you can just be a nuisance over there, or maybe if you can get one kill or even just finesse your life, just be a nuisance and really being annoying over there because as much time that you can buy is just good for your team uh, to win this round. So as long as you're buying time in this diner area and as long as these guys are playing pretty solid post plant in this building, you guys should be free for winning this round. So once again, I have to hit you with a disclaimer. There could be some things that they have tweaked going into MW3. This is just gonna be a day one strategy for you and your team that you can use in those early GBs or wager tournaments or anything that you guys might be playing during those first few weeks. You know, this is going to evolve. Like I said before, new movement, new mechanics, everything's going to evolve simply because of how the game is gonna be played. This again is just 2010 strategy that I'm just reintroducing because that's all that we can really work with at this point in time uh, without the full game coming out. So. Just giving you guys some advice here and making sure that you can try and utilize something going into those first few weeks. So thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you guys can utilize this specific B-sided full-on team rush uh, on offense on Karachi. And I'll see you guys in the next video.